In this video, I'm going to make a three-tier ruffle bustle from retired McCall's 6770 View B. It is still available in a few places online, but maybe with this video, anyone can construct something similar from scratch themselves without needing the pattern. Cut out all your pattern pieces. Since everyone associates steampunk with tea, I wanted to mix it up a little and make something coffee related. I had to serge the edges of this fabric as it is one step up from Chinese brocade when it comes to fraying. The fabric color happened to be called Java. Starting with the bottom ruffle, cut your alignment markers. Piece 12 is a centerpiece and will be sewed to its pair. Clip the alignment markers on piece 13, which is the outside part of the bottom ruffle. With right sides together, sew the two pieces of 12 at the center seam. Make sure you press your seams flat. Next, using the alignment markers and right sides together, line up the outer edges of piece 12 and piece 13 and sew. Press your seams. Next, I did a rolled hem on the bottom edge of the bottom ruffle. I managed to find this three row lace. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have it as a single row each ruffle or multiples, but I decided on the former. The lace color when I ordered it was latte. Next, I wanted a trim of bling And I found this. It looks like it's gems, but it's just molded plastic to make it look like gems. I like this for costume, as there is no risk on losing the gems due to convention crowds. If you sew it very slowly and carefully, you can do it on your machine but be careful as it can very easily break a needle if you're not paying attention. Repeat all previous steps on the bottom ruffle for the middle ruffle or pieces 14 and 15. It's literally the same thing. For the middle ruffle, I decided to use the middle lace. For the top ruffle, it's almost the same procedure, except for pieces 17 is a cut one on fold, as opposed to having a seam down the middle. There's also an alignment marker at the top of piece 16 for lining up with the waistband and the base. Repeat the process of sewing and adding the ruffle to the top as previous.
Once all of that is done, I hand sewed the bling trim around the back of each ruffle so it to tidy it up. Next is the base. Cut your alignment markers. With right sides together, sew piece 10 and 11 together. Press your seams. I decided to do a rolled hem on the bottom of the base even though it wasn't in the instructions. Don't forget to hem the raw sides as well. Fold in half to find the center. Fold in half again to find the quarter marks. Find the center of the bottom ruffle. In this case, the placements are on the seams, so they're very easy to find. Line up the placements and pin them together. Now for the gathering. Find the halfway point between. And pin. Find the halfway point between and pin. Repeat ad nauseum until you've used a ton of pins and that they go all the way across the ruffle. Carefully sew all of that down. Take your pattern piece 10 and a piece of marking chalk and transfer the placement line for the middle ruffle. Repeat for all sections. Repeat the ruffle technique for the middle ruffle. Halfway point and pin. halfway point, and pin, etc. Repeat for the top ruffle.
cut out piece 18, which is the waistband bit, and interface it. The instructions call for a ribbon, which I don't have, so I cut out two long strips of my fabric and also interface those. With right sides together, sew them into a very long strip for the belt tie. Working with right sides of the belt onto the wrong side of the bustle, line up the center and alignment markers together. Pin. So a little less than the usual seam allowance along the top treating the belt like it's a large bias tape. Skipping over the hard gem sections, of which I'll have to hand sew later, I created the belt by turning the serge edges in and sewing them together. With a few minor places where more hand sewing is needed, the bustle is complete. It can be worn around the waist, or on a slightly chilly evening, be worn around the shoulders as a shawl.